Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonko. We are continuing our discussion and our tribute to Chinua Achebe, the Nigerian writer who passed away yesterday. And joining us now is a professor of literature at Cornell University, the son of Ngugi Wationgo and the author of the book, Nairobi Heat, Makomi Ngugi Wationgo. Welcome to Sahara TV. Yes, thank you for having me. Now, now, let me start by saying, uh, asking you, how were you introduced to the works of Chinua Achebe? Well, you know, because my father is a writer, when I was growing up, he had this big poster of the African Writer series um, that hanged in our sitting room, you know. So, and I have a, a very vivid memory of some of the writers there, Chinua Achebe, my dad, uh, you know, and Asambena um, Usmana with his pipe. You know, so, so I grew up with that sort of, sort of an image in my house. In mm. terms of the, of the literature itself, it wasn't until much later in, uh, in high school, you know. But um, people tend to confuse, it's a funny story, people tend to confuse my dad with, uh, with Chinua Achebe. So there was a time we were at uh, Jomo Kenyatta Airport, you know, and this guy walks up to us, you know, and he says, well, you know, sir, I'm very happy to read, you know, to meet you, I've read all your books. I especially love Things Fall Apart, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so and I've, I've, you know, so we have we have experienced such um, uh, instances before. So I've, I've met him in in many many ways, but I've never met him in I never met him in person. Wow, wow. Now, now, when you heard about his passing, what what did that mean to you? How did you react to that? How did you take the news? Well, you know, um, I got the news through Facebook, and one of one of the posts I read was from Petina Gapa, the Zimbabwean writer. You know, and she said that for her, she oh, didn't. Yeah, so I'm with my two year old here. No, that's okay. We understand. Yeah. You know, so, and, and for her, she said that she doesn't, um, you know, she, she doesn't understand. She, she doesn't know, or she never expected people like Chinua Achebe to die. And that was my same feeling as well. So I knew he was sick and he wasn't doing well for a while. But it's still one of those things where, you know, because he's so. You know, the, the, I guess the books are so physical and, and so alive, you know, with it's, it's lasting to associate, you know, a chapter with, uh, with death, you know, but it's, you know, it's inevitable for all of us. So that my, my reaction has been one of, um, of, 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 of not disbelief, because intellectually I know, but one of just, I don't know, wondering. Mm. Yeah, now, now his passing also uh, brings us uh, closer to, we, we see a lot of people of his generation passing away, especially writers, and you are of the new generation. Uh, what, what, what are you going to, as, as people in the new generation, carry on from the old in your work? And I mean, what I'm asking you is, uh, what are the influences of people like Achebe on what you do? Well, I mean, it, 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 if we think of it in terms of the African literary tradition, you know, the generation, you know, my dad's generation and Chinua Achebe's generation, you know, even though President Chinua Achebe, you know, he never liked the term uh, father of African literature, you know, he never used it himself. You know, there are ways in which truly without them, uh, our generation of writers wouldn't be here. So as the saying goes, we write standing uh, on their shoulders. But there's, there's some questions uh, that we will carry forward. For example, the language question, you know. Um, you know, in, in my generation of writers, we need to decide, uh, or to have, actually to have a healthy debate about the language of African literature. Uh, we need to think about the example set by Chinua Achebe of being actively involved in our societies. You know, so, so the writer is not just sitting there with a pen, but also actively engaged with what's happening uh, in Africa and our nations. You know, so, so we have, we have, a, leg and we have a, a legacy, we have, we have a duty of writing well as well, you know, because Chinua Achebe, in my opinion, was also very interested in, in the aesthetics of, of writing. So I would say, if I was to break that down, you know, in, in a sentence or two, I would say we have a duty to write well, and we have a duty to society. Mm. Yeah, especially to society, because much of Achebe's career also was spent doing getting involved in the discourse or the political discourse in, in Nigeria. And I also know that your father, Ngugi himself, was involved in that. Do you think that we see enough of that from young writers like you in, in today's Africa? Well, you know, it, it, we have no choice. You know, when you look at, um, you know, when I look at my American counterparts, you know, they have, you know, they, they, they have a, a degree of, uh, of or they can afford to be removed, and I don't want to say afford, but let me use it. They can afford to be removed from uh, 
from society. But for us, we have no choice. If you look at Kenya in 2007, you know, and I think that was the coming of age of, of my generation of writers in Kenya, you know, because before that we were sort of just writing and doing our thing. You know, and then the violence breaks out and then we realize, no, you know, we can't, it, it, that the option, an, um, a writer's option, uh, or silence is no longer an option for us, you know. So, so in, in a way, really, we have no choice. We cannot just stand on the sidelines, you know, and watch, um, you know, uh, our society, societies break down into violence. Uh, the corruption, you know, um, you know, and this, you know, and this slow encroachment of, uh, of 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 China and the competitions of the U.S. and China. There are all these issues that we have to address. We have no choice but to address them. Now, you wrote a, a well-received tribute to Chinua Achebe. Uh, what did you say there, and uh, what is the reaction to what you wrote? Well, I mean, I was just, I was just, you know, like thinking back, you know, like, like one of the is. is Oh, just one second, please. Okay, use this one. No, no, I already did. I already did. Our guest uh, has a two-year-old, so uh, pardon us while he, he gets her uh, situated. Yeah, okay, you can see her on, on camera. She's also involved in our discourse in, in her own way. Uh, welcome to Sahara TV. What's her name? Uh, her name is Nyamura. Nyamura. Okay, what does that mean? It means bringer of rain. Okay, that's good. All right, so go, go ahead and tell us about the, the uh, tribute you wrote for Chino Achebe. Yeah, so I was thinking, I was thinking in terms of uh, some of the things I already mentioned, like, you know, uh, the, just remembering him, you know, remembering the poster, you know, the African Writers Series. And the African Writers Series, of course, you know, is, 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 a, is, is a foundation of, of the African literary tradition. Um, and thinking of teaching him, you know, in, in, um, in February, I was teaching Things Fall Apart in relation or alongside uh, Joseph Conrad. And my argument was that, that what Chino Achebe did with Things Fall Apart was to, and he himself says that actually, is to give voice, you know, to the Africans who were standing on the sidelines of the, of the Congo River in, in, you know, in, uh, in Heart of Darkness. So in my, in, my, in my tribute, I was saying, well, you know, I think Chino Achebe's contribution uh, is, is his voice, you know, and you can think about the way he uses his voice. If you look at um, the other country, you know, and I think a lot of Nigerians have taken issue with, uh, with how he portrayed the Biafran war, you know, but you still see his voice very measured, very controlled, uh, very passionate, and at the same time, thinking through his work, you, you realize that he couldn't be writing that well if he didn't listen, if he didn't listen very, very well. Mm -hmm. So as I was thinking, of, I was, it was sort of, sort of uh, laid back thinking through of, uh, of, of, uh, of, 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 of his voice, really. Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in his book, The Education of the British Protected Child, he wrote that our humanity is contingent on the humanity of our fellows, that no person or group can mm -hmm. be human alone that we rise above the animal together or not at all. Mm -hmm. now, now, if you are talking to your students and you want to summarize the essence of Chinu Achebe, what, how, do you, how do you project it? Well, you know, for me, I'd, I'd fall back on, uh, on, on voice and his political activism. You know, but you, you can see that again in the, in, the, in the passage you just read, you know, in, in, which to me it shows a very deep humanism. Right, you know, and with with humanism, it's it's a huge, it's a deep belief in, uh, in that, you know, that we are all here together, you know, and we'll raise up together or perish together. It's the, um, it's a variation of the of the of, of the Zulu or South African saying of uh, I'm a human being because of some somebody else is a human being, mm. you know. So and the thing about Achebe, you never see, you never see him, um, you know, either angry at least in his writing. Uh, well, except for the essay, <laughs> except for the essay on, uh, on, uh, on Conrad. Uh, but you never see him picking an extreme of one side or another, right? You know, so for him, you know, and for him, he's a humanist, you know. So you will find him being overly radical and you will find him being overly conservative. For him, his driving ideology is humanity. Mm -hmm. Now, one last question. Uh, if someone comes to you and says, I have only time for one book, of Achebe that I can read. What book will you recommend? I know it's difficult, but one, one book will you say, go and read this, that will tell you who Achebe is? Um, I would say 
Hmm. Well, I, I definitely I'll say things fall apart, you know, and it's, it's, it's a great book because it, it accomplishes two things, right? It shows, it gives voice to the Africans. Uh, it shows the uh, eventual uh, breakdown of African societies because of colonialism. But it does one more thing, which people don't usually talk about, and it shows uh, Okonkwo as a, as a character who can, you know, whom you can discuss alongside the Chiles and, and other characters who, you know, are, you know are, are the major characters who are struggling against forces larger than themselves, you know. I, I do think he's the first you know, lovable anti-hero, you know, and my, my, my understanding of an anti-hero is a character that you didn't ordinarily identify with, but you end up falling in love with anyway. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. That, that is uh, Makoma uh, Ngugi Watyonga, uh, the author of Nairobi Heat, a novel, and he spoke to us uh, from Cornell University where he teaches. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, when we come back, we are going to continue our discussion on the legacy and time of Chinua Achebe. We are going to talk to Chidon Wangwu, who is an associate, associate of Chinua Achebe. We are also going to talk to Ndoka Otieno in Canada, who as of last year was uh, working with Chinua Achebe directly. Stay with us. If you're not informed, you will be If you don't know where you come from, you, you will never find where you're going. When Nigeria is working, we will all know. PDP and us are diametrically opposed. Sahara TV. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Information. Education. Inspiration.